Hi, and welcome to this webinar. New technology allows 24-7 fresh food services at workplaces. My name is Aslak De Silva. I'm the CEO of Self Restore. Self Restore is a company that produces intelligent vending machines. At the moment, we have customers in 21 countries. We actually won with our latest product line, the Wendy's Award for the best new product in 2022. Today, I'm here giving you a keynote on how restaurant businesses and workplaces are actually finding a new business opportunity. Today with me at this studio, I have also a customer who's operating in this field from Nuri Lena Schupak and also our marketing director Mali Nöstman. We will have a panel discussion with them a bit later after my keynote here today. But hey, let me start with a story. A few weeks back, I was on the eighth floor of our office building. I was finishing my meeting at 12.30 and the leadership team meeting was starting at 1 p.m. And as you all know, leadership team meetings sometimes are long and dreadful. And we knew that the dinner was about to start at 8 p.m. So long hours ahead, I had to fetch something to eat. Unfortunately for me, I was on the eighth floor and the canteen was actually in the next building. So I was quickly calculating myself that, okay, I could take the elevator, it's the rush hour, it might take me two, three minutes, or I could take the stairs again, two, three minutes. I walk to the other building and there again find the canteen, might take me a couple of minutes. At the canteen, very likely there are a lot of more people eating at the same time. So I have to queue first to get the tray and I have to queue to get the food. And even if there are many food lines there, it takes several minutes. And unfortunately for me, it could happen that, for instance, potatoes are missed. So then I have to wait for a while that they bring back to me. And then there are cashiers, even if they're very effective, so they will ask that, how do you pay this or something? And then I have to pay and wait for a while and get the receipt. After I get my food, I would need to go and find a place to sit. Likely, I would try to find an empty table so that I don't need to talk to anybody because talking also takes time. After I finish, I need to t take my tray back and put the dishes away and take all the garbage that I have and put them in the right places. And again, I have to go back to the eighth floor in another building and find my way. Again, choosing should I take the elevator or should I walk the stairs, knowing that I'm in a rush and, and sweating back to the meeting. And unfortunately, that's our real life in many times. But what if you were in the same situation that I was at that time? At the eighth floor of the office building, there was this kind of a self store cabinet where there was fresh food available. It took me about 30 seconds to get to the cabinet, about 30 seconds to buy. I, I bought actually a, a meal with a snack and then some beverage there to go. Sat down in, in a nice area, ate, and after 15 minutes I was done. I chose to actually go for the stair walk in any case because I felt that it's good to exercise before the leadership team meeting. And I had still 10 minutes spare time to fetch my coffee, go to the toilet and, and just relax and talk to colleagues outside there. I think this is the work that we would all enjoy a lot more, not to stress out in these short breaks and actually still eat healthy and well enough to be able to have long hours. So that's what I'm going to talk about today and that's what we are going to have the panel discussion about as well. But let's first go uh, some some bigger things first. Of course now after COVID or still during the COVID, so we see this remote work coming. And the remote work and hybrid work are, are the ones, the, the words that we hear a lot about. With hybrid work, we see some trends that um, Fridays we might want to stay home because then it's just convenient to go for the weekend. Mondays we might uh, choose to stay home because we're just a bit tired from the weekend and want to just sleep a bit longer. And likely Tuesdays to Thursdays we might be at the office. But while we're at the office, so if the purpose is to meet people and, and talk to colleagues, so why would we spend out that walking around and finding some lunch where at home it was so quick when we work and the, the lunch is close to us? For those who actually provide the service, so like canteens and, and restaurants, for them, the current trend is that we have labor shortages. We don't have enough people to work on those um, uh, service um, uh, uh, occupations where you actually are there physically on site. A lot of people might choose to choose work in a different industry nowadays and, and have better pay and better working hours. We also see some of our customers coming back to the office with a trick. So we have some office uh, customers or bigger companies that say that, hey, if you come to the office, the meal is on us. So this way we see uh, some, some tricks to kind of help people to come to the office and feel good about it. But if it's a free meal, it needs to be delicious enough that you feel that that was actually a reward to come to the office. 
And as said before, the time at the office is now changed from before. We were fine to work alone in an office cube for a while, but nowadays if you're at the office, we want to be really effective as we would be working home remotely. Consumer trends as well. We want healthy food, fresh food all the time. And sometimes we hear these talks that we, we should snack frequently. And these have changed now when we have actually been able to work from home and have access to our home fridge at the time that we want at any time. So we are not anymore like going from exactly the same time for lunch or not exactly the same time for snack. We are not eating exactly the same things. So this kind of assortment change is there for sure for consumers and we have liked that. At the same time we are used to getting restaurant food at home. We, we use these delivery services to get the good food home and actually treat ourselves. So we want the same thing when we go back to work. And so all this kind of quickness, easiness and, and different trends, so these all play a, play a huge role in what's going to happen in the future and, and that's what we need to be prepared for. If you look at the, the business side and, and what has happened, so grocery stores th themselves have been there for, for a long time in these different models. They have huge markets with great logistic centers, you can easily go there with a car or commute there, pick up uh, from various um, items from the broad assortment and get everything at the same time. Maybe take the food home for the whole week and the, the whole family at the once. Then on the other hand we have seen this kind of more convenience stores coming close to the where we live or where we work. The assortment might be limited, it might be a bit more expensive, but it's handy when we don't have time to queue and go and pick up everything. But then we are quite happy that when we have a small break we get something or we, if we miss some item like let's say milk or something so we can just go and get it. And then maybe after COVID as well, more home deliveries are picking up. So we, we get the big items to deliver to home. But if you look at restaurants, so yes, we do have these kind of location-based places, those kind of big marketplaces where you have invested a lot of money to have a restaurant and everything in place. And then yes, you have the home delivery. On the other hand, the home delivery is not maybe that profitable because you're serving one customer and there's a lot of work, a lot of logistics for one customer. But what we actually are really lacking is in between and, and their selfish store actually fits in perfectly. So putting in a place where it's more convenient for you to pick up your food, it might not have the same assortment but it will have good quality food and it's close to you whether you are at the office or, or at home. So there, there you can go. A, while back, a few weeks back I was in London and I was looking at when people were in the big offices and a lot of people came out from the office, went outside to the nearest grocery store and they were queuing to get their salad or sandwich and just go back to the office to eat and continue to work. As in my example in the beginning, I was explaining the same situation for me when I could have gone to the canteen. But we spend a lot of time in vain queuing and waiting and just getting something where we should actually be offered something good quality where we are. When we look at the customer database that we have from 21 countries, it was surprising to me and might be for you as well that actually the items that sell the most are meal items. So if you look at the, the numbers of units sold, so, so the meal items are more than half of the whole, whole assortment sold through our cabinets in 21 countries in Europe. Beverages being on, on second and snacks being third. I was thinking myself before that yeah you have seen this coca-cola machines and others so the beverages would be there and the other one of course what you see at the airports for instance so a lot of snacks. Luckily for us, at least based on our data, chocolate bars on, are only about 7% of the, all the purchases. And of course, if you look at the revenue generated by the vending machines, then even a smaller portion, since of course, meal items are more expensive to buy. The global trends show that um, the healthy food and, and kind of a grab and go quickness is they are growing a lot. So this is a good opportunity for you as well to start to work in this field. Another other interesting fact, if you look at when do people actually buy, so of course lunch hour, peak hours, that makes sense, that if it's convenient close to you, that's when you're going to buy, that's the rhythm that we tend to have. But it's good to know as well that people tend to, 20% uh, of the, the purchases happen before lunch, so when people actually come to the workplace, they go and buy the meal item already that time, maybe, maybe they're eating earlier than normally, or they, they need that to be close to them when they start to eat. But also after, after the lunch, so we were thinking, or I was at least thinking that if you were snacking after that, but people buy meal items as well, maybe they have their late lunch or so, and, and a lot of people actually buy meals to home. So this is very convenient that if you have good quality restaurant food 
available for you and, and then you can take it home. So again, you save time from other things in life and do something more with your spare time. But let's go some use cases so, so to elaborate a bit on this. So if you were to work in a hospital, so you understand that the hygiene is everything. You just cannot go out from, from a hospital as a doctor to fetch something. So likely that whatever you eat needs to be inside the hospital. The other problem that you have there is that, of course, you are allowed to have breaks, but you cannot control like when they are. So if you are an, in an op operation, so of course you cannot say that, well, let's stop the operation now, I have my lunch break and I will come back in an hour. So you need to be a bit flexible on there. And, and again, it can't be too far away because of course, if you're a doctor, you're an expensive employee, so you need to be doing your work as much as you can. So this is a, a perfect opportunity in many ways for this kind of uh, uh, unmanned and remote locations to be serving these people, doctors and nurses who need their food close where they are and handy where they are. They might move in a hospital from one room to another, a different location, so they cannot always go to a central location. So this is one good use case that we have already customers in several countries uh, as hosp uh, hospitals have been buying this service to be able to provide for their employees. Factories, on the other hand, kind of are, are working in shifts. So people come and go, maybe they have their eight hour shift in three shifts. So they come, some people come in the morning, some in the afternoon, some work for night. And often it's very dreadful to be able to, you don't have so many people maybe at night, but and the quality of the service tends to be that, hey, since it's, it's a hard shift for others to be working in a canteen and the breaks are still short and they are at certain times. So nobody's providing any good service for them. Similarly, at, at the factory, you have very tight shuttles, so you cannot say that I was late from lunch, sorry, I missed that. So, so you have to be there when you have to be. Again, the break, the example of me having that half an hour break, so for in a factory, that's a normal day for everybody. There are short breaks, quick to get something good to eat and, and continue with that. So it's hard to lead the healthy life in this kind of environment unless you have this service available. Then offices, um, we go, come and go in different times. So we are not anymore working from nine to five or eight to four as, as you do a lot in Finland. So that the, the shifts are different. So you are, maybe sometimes you need to stay overnight, a longer night in the evening. And, and, and a good example from one of our customers is that they actually provide free food after 6 p.m. So if somebody has to stay longer, so they can actually then t just go and pick them from the self-destroy cabinet, whatever they need. So again, they can go for the he healthy and fresh option, not always ordering pizza in or something, but just kind of keeping it and keep the pace and finish work as quickly as possible and then go home. It's, it's dreadful if you think that you go to an office and, and want to meet your colleagues, but you spend 90 minutes of that fetching your lunch. So again, my question is, why would you go to the office to do that? So the more time you actually be spend at the office and more with the colleagues, so the better outcomes that our jobs will have. So that's, again, some shift that we see in trends that are going to happen now and in the future for many. And canteens, as said before, also have limited working hours. Um, unfortunately, in our headquarters, so the canteen closes at 12.30 in the afternoon, so we can't even have a long lunch or, or if you want to have a Christmas lunch. So we need to go somewhere else because they have said that on Fridays it closes at that time. That's nothing we can do. So, but with these kind of services, we would be able to still enjoy Friday maybe together as a team there and, and spend time together. But wrapping it up all here, so changes are, are happening. So food convenience, in, in a, when we talk about meal items, are, are, is missing at the moment in many locations. But the trend is now changing, and that's what we are here to listen more today about. Restaurants and workplaces, the home delivery is not, not feasible. You cannot just you get the, the delivery um, maybe to the reception, and again, you need to fetch and wait and all this. So the logistics is not as optimal as for maybe for consumers at home. And then if you look at the, the kind of the bigger scale here, that these services could be provided in many locations at the same time with very limited investments and which provides a great opportunity, maybe even for you there on the other side to, to think about like, is this going to be my future business? But hey, that was from me just to kind of open up the discussion. And now we will m move on to our panel discussion, which will be led by Malin Östman, our marketing director. Welcome, Liana Naslak. I'm super happy to have you here. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Liana, I'd like to start with, can you just tell us a bit more about Nordea and yourself? 
Sure. Um, Nuri was founded last year um, with the goal to provide companies with local and fresh food to an affordable price. Um, today we have several different clients. We have hotels, you spoke about it. Um, we have uh, schools, we have parking lots, slots, um, camping parks, so really a lot of um, different customers um, and now we can provide a variety of solutions to a variety of needs and it's really interesting but still the goal is to partner with local food providers so we can create a, an individualized digitalized <laughs> customer experience. Right and can you elaborate a little bit on the business model of Nouris? Um, we offer our fridge on a subscription base. Mm -hmm. um, it's 790 Swiss francs. Mm -hmm. Everything is included, the food waste, a big question often in sales. Um, the delivers are included, everything except the products. The products we sell, there we take a little margin. Okay. Okay. I was like, is this any difference or is there any differences or similarities between Nuris business model and what you see other customers operate in? Yeah, I think um, this Nuris business model is, is, there has been some companies that have been doing that for a longer time, um, but this is probably still a new approach that you actually come to the office and uh, kind of replace the canteens and I would say that even for smaller locations that might not have been feasible before. But there are also other ones um, which we see. Sometimes the office building or the company themselves buys the fridge and then they kind of let somebody else operate. Or sometimes it's already the one that operates with canteens. So kind of like building remote location because they ha already have the food production there and every facility is, is ready for that. So they kind of then offer this more convenient locations like for me on the eighth floor, basically that I don't need to go for the canteen when I don't have time. So there are different models for sure. And uh, but happy to see as well that there are different things happening. Yeah, definitely interesting. And then shifting focus a bit, you talked about trends before us. Like, Lena, what kind of trends do you see in workplaces? I think there are, we, we see both the same uh, big trends we see in every market, like digitalization, sustainability. What I see in the food market or in the food service market, um, that we go shift from standardized products to individualized mm. offers. So um, for a long time, I think people or companies provided a standardized mm -hmm. product to other companies. Uh, and today we shifted to say, hey, each company is different and you have to be flexible to, yeah, there are companies who work on Saturday and Sundays, but other mm -hmm. companies have a lot of home office and uh, people are only there on Wednesday and Friday. So you have to be more flexible and mm -hmm. you have to individualize your your offer for other companies right yeah, and that's like really interesting point like normally a restaurant would have a set menu said <laughs> that you're welcome <laughs> and then you wait for who is coming mm -hmm. and of course then if you have the location domination that you have no other options people will come but i love what you're saying that you basically are building a so even those kind of micro locations are individual locations mm -hmm. and for the people who are there so that they will actually get what they want rather than that I have a restaurant and come and eat if you want to. So I really love that. Yeah. Yes, and even in, in big companies uh, where we see it, we have one big uh, client, uh, Gilgen Door Systems in Switzerland, uh, where we have four or five different fridges um, and every fridge has a different offer or different products inside because in in fridge number one there is probably the marketing team going mm -hmm. in fridge number two the production team is going in the uh, third one the customer service and probably clients of this company are going so uh, there we see a lot of different especially also small differences in in do you want to have a vegan mm. product in or only chocolate? Like you said mm. it before, it's some <laughs> some healthier people, some not that healthy. So yeah. it's really interesting how uh, one fridge can be absolutely different to others. Definitely. And then that leads me to the next question, because you have access to a lot of data. What kind of insights can you get from the data and how do you turn that around into action? I think data is the key. Uh, that's also the reason why we work with Selfless Store. Mm -hmm. um, data today is the key to um, 
give the best offer to the to the clients and the customers and the users and everything, uh, wh which product you, you take or take out. But on the other hand, it's also the key to reduce food waste, mm -hmm. to, um, say to tell, hey, oh, now we have to promote another product because mm -hmm. it will uh, not good in the next few days. Mm -hmm. um, all the products we have, um, are new, they have to have a promotion, combo deals. You you have to use this data so you can prevent food waste mm. and uh, have a high uh, volume on sales. Right. Yeah, I, thi I think one thing that has happened, like if you go back to the grocery store, restaurant, so you know what's going to be expiring. Mm -hmm. And in normal vending machines, you tend to have maybe something that's not going to expire because you are not going frequently there and you don't want to check mm. that. If you have a, s a shop that uh, you have expired products, you have actually people going through <laughs> manually and mm. checking what are the dates and then putting them in front. But now with technology, you can actually automate that mm -hmm. and see. So when you you code it in the RFID tag, so you already know and you can automate the system to do that for you. So you can uh, basically do that, hey, you know that on Friday um, uh, something's going to expire, so you can mm. put it on sale minus 30% on Thursday and then make people buy that and, and help to again reduce the food waste, but mm. uh, also reduce the manual labor needed mm -hmm. and, and follow that if something happening. And the same way that if you see that uh, a hot day is coming and, and people are drinking a lot of, of beverages and mm. buying, so you can react to it quickly mm. and see that, hey, now we have an urgent need and I will go there. Okay. And based on the time data, again, like what time of the day people tend to buy, so you can again d make the decision that should I go to the fridge number one or two first, I based on the data, you will actually cater the customers who are in need first. It's also really interesting now with the companies where you have like home office days. So you said it Monday is not a big sales day. Uh, it's Wednesday uh, most often. So you also have to organize that on this day, the fridge mm. has to be full. And that's only if, if you don't have the data from yeah. Selfly. How do you know when you only go once or twice per week? When are the peaks? When do I have to deliver? When, uh, when, if you have no data, probably the fridge was uh, empty one day and <laughs> you, <all> <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And continuing on the topic of data, I mean, we have data from uh, self-restore cabinets in 21 countries. And what we can see from that is that on average, a little bit more than 20% of consumers buy more than one item. But in Nuri's case, that figure is 30%. What's the reason? What's the secret? Um, I think on one hand, really individual individualized data. Um, and I think a lot of these uh, sales are uh, one meal plus one uh, beverage. That most often is that what you do, what you take. and. Um, it's quite interesting because in sales, uh, a lot of the people I speak to mm. are like, mm, uh, we don't need beverage in our fridges. Mm. And I was like, I'm always like, <laughs> probably <laughs> you need <laughs> it. <laughs> because a lot of companies, they uh, offer water yeah. to their employees. And in the end, it's people want to have, they don't want to have the Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. not in Switzerland but they want to have something that tastes, mm. is less sugary, less uh, calorie mm -hmm. um, than, than the big soft drinks. And um, yeah, I think this combination of meal and beverage is one of the main things that people buy. And we have a variety of drinks mm. in, in, the, in the fridge. So that makes it more interesting. So you mm. have the orange juice for the morning, you have the energy drink for the afternoon, or you have the soft drinks for the meal, lunch time. Right. And perhaps tricky question, but can you see any seasonal trends when it comes to food? Open question to both of you. Well, uh, I do see that, and I, I think it's um, it would be dull to eat every day the same thing. <laughs> so I, I think that's that you can create the seasons and you can, I don't know, tackle Tuesdays or something. You can promote these different things as well. And of course, summertime, we can see from the trends that are like beverages sell more. So all this and, and like smoothies and other things that you kind of crave for them more. So yeah, those are them. But I, I would say that also like changing the assortment, you mm -hmm. can change the, the kind of the game as, as well. And it's, it's fun to come to watch. But 
don't forget to promote the changes yeah. like it doesn't happen like if you mm. think of our everyday life so when we work walk around so we don't pay attention to everything it has something changed mm. so mm. that's why again it's it's easy to have a, even a roll up or it's just mm. a person saying that hey have you checked out our new or, or ask for feedback and then make the changes accordingly mm. yeah um i think also the seasonal uh, the biggest change is soup and salad mm -hmm. in winter soup is need really needed mm -hmm. and uh in the summertime salad is needed <laughs> so that's quite uh important to to think about it and to be prepared for that yeah. um and uh, people will let you know if you let them what they really need um and th i think that's quite interesting then uh, especially if you have like um, co chocolate drinks and something like that for mm -hmm. winter that was now requested or uh, in summer uh, a lot more energy drinks are mm. were requested so that's quite interesting how people want to have special things to special times yeah and then a question that goes back a little bit to perhaps promotion as well because that is uh, whenever you start with the new customer how do you do that and do you do any promotion around it then that's a big big thing and we we're changing the concept frequently mm -hmm. now with every every new customer we learn more um, we start mostly with two weeks in advance that we uh, inform the employees mm -hmm. hey we will come there mm -hmm. please download the app so they are mm -hmm. prepared of what is coming um, nowadays we also um, have an uh, introduction mm -hmm. um, so we let them know, hey, on lunchtime we are standing next mm -hmm. to the um, fridge and we will tell you and um, it will be interesting. Uh, and, uh, we will also give away some products. Yeah. And then the first month they always have 20% ah. off, more or less, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the three first months are the key if they are happy or yeah. not so uh you ha we are in good contact with the uh hr or admi administration people or management sometimes with analyzing data take mm. actions if something doesn't work mm. or is not um if a one fridge doesn't go like mm. we want it to go it so um then we we talk with them have events um do interviews with the cast with the mm. employees yeah cool very interesting to hear i'm wondering i was like do you have any additional examples yeah but uh, first is like if you were to open a restaurant would you be quiet about it of course you would want people to know yeah. so that's there um, one funny thing that we have built for few customers is the is kind of a smile opening mm. that you can open the cabinet with a smile and that's a really good gimmick to start with so you can promote and say that it's here and then you when you smile you get it open so you get a good experience of mm -hmm. it so it's not like a cold show your card open the door pick something but it kind of relaxes you and you have a good feeling so that has worked really well in those mm -hmm. and having just roll-ups and, and other kind of leaflets even t and, yeah. and emails to saying that this is going to happen and like you said may maybe i make a celebration of it so Mm. One thing that we've done, um, of course, you're not allowed to sell in all locations, but have a sparkling wine there or mm. something that you can pick up when you open with a smile or something. So again, something positive or, or something like that makes you feel that now this is a celebration that I joined and make mm. people try that. What we see often, which is true in many cases, that the, the, if you buy more than five times, so then you're used to it's a first yeah. time, sorry, exciting mm. and uh, you're a bit nervous. So we, it's good to help people to get used to the buying and, and seeing how simple it is. And in the end, so the optimal is that it feels like it's your home fridge, mm. but at the office and everything is there proactively filled. So you're always happy to go in and buy more. Mm. Mm. Uh, great advice. Uh, I think that the smile demo, I've tried that myself. It's really funny. <laughs> so it gives you a smile for sure on your face for the rest of the day. We're coming towards the end and I'm wondering, this is a question to both of you again. If you would give a single piece of advice to someone who wants to succeed in the workplace food service business, what would that be? Well, yeah, if I may start first. Um, one idea is to think that they like selfie stores that they can be your pop-up stores and pop-up restaurants so you can change the location where it's needed so kind of test it out go there be close to people and get the feedback mm -hmm. in a way that hey 
that is this working and and if it doesn't change the location if it works well start another pop-up location so kind of like take it step by step quite easily it doesn't cost that much it's a very small investment but uh, it can delight you a lot and and the consumers to be surprised that hey i can get good food here yeah i i would uh, would also say remain in close mm. contact be be a part of this company speak with hr speak with the people who regularly mm. use it and speak with the people who don't use it and ask mm. why. Um, so you really can create um, an addition or feature of for this company and um, individualize it. I said it so often <laughs> today, <laughs> individualize the product so it really fits to the customer. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for uh, being here today. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> And to the audience online, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next webinar.